I'm the Diploma Course Director at the WSET School. Um, so um, I look after the Diploma Courses. So that essentially means that for all of the kind of uh, 400 plus diploma students that we have each year at various staging, stages of the course, I look after their schedules, the teaching materials, the educators that we use, and I, I teach as well. Um, I've been in the industry now for 16 years. I started with Majestic Wine. Um, I looked after a retail store in the south of England. I really liked the, the training side of the job. It was, it was uh, part of my, my, my daily routine. I didn't like the hours of retail too much, so I, I joined the education team at the WSET school about 11 years ago. Um, and I've been here in, in one capacity or another since. Um, and I work for, I'm a permanent member of staff, I work for the, the WSET school in London. So um, that means that, that we are the, the, the biggest provider of uh, wine, uh, spirits, sake qualifications. Um, and the, the biggest uh, diploma provider. Um, so the idea of, of today's webinar is to just give you an introduction to the diploma. So let you know what it's, what it's about, what's expected of you as a, as a level four student, uh, and give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you've got um, uh, and just figure out whether the diploma is right for you. And if it is, then which format's best for you, which, which will be best fitting in with your, your circumstances and lifestyle. Um, we have got a, a Q&A function, so if you've got any questions at any point, then feel free to, to ask questions in the, in the Q&A the Q area. Um, my colleague Rachel will be scanning through those. If you've got any questions, ask away. And any questions that she can't tackle, then feel free to, to post a question anyway, um, and, and we'll get to them at the end. We'll go through as many as we can. Okay, so I mean, this, this is it, a market leading qualification setting a global standard for wine education. It's, it's often referred to as the, the driving license within, within the, uh, the wine world. It gives you a, a range of skills, um, analytical skills, evaluative skills. It gives you excellent theoretical and product knowledge, um, but it also gives you exemplary tasting skills as well. So it's a, a, a real um, a real go-to qualification for those that are serious about working within the, uh, the wine industry. Um, what I wanted to do initially was just to, to give you a little bit of insight in terms of how the, uh, the level four qualification differs as compared to the other wine qualifications within the WSET suite, the, the WSET's portfolio. So many of you might be familiar with the, the level one qualification. And at level one, it's all about factual recall. It's all about learning some facts as they relate to the wine world. And for those of you that have done level one, the examination, the assessment as part of the qualification is all about identifying the correct answer from amongst the distractors. Then we move on to level two. And the level two, the assessment structure is very similar. So students are asked to identify the correct answer from amongst the distractors. It's made a little bit more challenging in that students are expected to know about a lot more, the, the breadth of the specification, um, the learning out, outcomes, assessment criteria are much broader. So that's what makes it a little bit more challenging. But in terms of the skills that the examiners are, are trying to assess, it's still very much a factual recall. So many of you will have already gained the, the level three award in wines, and that's why you're interested in perhaps furthering your, your, um, your understanding of the world of wine by progressing onto the level four qualification. At level three, things change. So as you might expect, the level three qualification in terms of how it's assessed is a little bit more similar to the level four qualification. So at level three, you're assessed in terms of your tasting ability, you're assessed in terms of your ability to demonstrate your comprehension, your level of understanding, you're asked to explain certain concepts. And you also still, as you might expect, need to be able to demonstrate that you know the facts as well. At level four, 
things change. So you're still expected to know the facts. You're still expected to be able to recall the facts. Um, your comprehension, your application of concepts like wine production and wine business will be tested. But you also need to demonstrate what we refer to as higher level skills as well. So your ability to evaluate, your ability to analyze, your ability to um, compare, but also create uh, novel, um, novel solutions to particular problems. So it's not just those comprehensive application, factual um, skills that are assessed, we're assess assessing some higher level skills as well. Okay, so why should you do it? What will the, the, the diploma offer you? Well, as I've already explained, it's, it, it provides you with a lot of specialist skills, not just your understanding of wines and how they're made, um, but your understanding of where those wines position themselves within the wider world of wine. Um, so you learn more about kind of wine business, something that up until this point um, isn't enormously explored as part of the, the previous WSET wine-based qualifications. Um, and uh, essentially, it's a product knowledge course. You learn a lot about styles of wine, why they taste, taste like they do, as well as developing your tasting and theoretical skills. And uh, achieving the qualification provides you with a globally recognized qualification. I referred to it earlier as uh, the driving license within the wine industry. More and more people around the world internationally know the WSET and recognize the WSET and more specifically the WSET school as a real center for excellence and a center of top quality um, wine education qualifications. So having that post-nominal DIP WACT, which shows that you completed the diploma, is a real stamp of authority. It shows you that you have um, completed that, that series of assessments. You've been able to demonstrate a really good understanding of, of wine knowledge to your peers within the industry. And then perhaps one, I think, benefit that isn't uh, immediately obvious is that Completing a uh, diploma qualification, irrespective as to, the, as to the format, whether that's a classroom based course or whether that's an online course, you get to develop a, a network of uh, peers and friends, people that you perhaps wouldn't normally come into contact with. So an opportunity to network with like minded individuals, but also subject specialists, matter experts within the wider industry. And that um, the opportunity to network extends well beyond the, uh, the completion of the qualification. You, um, you, on completion of the qualification, you're entitled to join the Diploma Alumni, giving you further opportunities to network with like-minded individ like individuals and other Diploma graduates. So it's not just about developing your skills, it's developing a, a real lifelong network of, of friends and colleagues as well. So in terms of um, what's involved, so what's expected of you as uh, a student, quite a lot is the short answer. So 500 hours of study, and that sound like, sounds like quite a lot, and it is quite a, quite a lot. I think just to put that into perspective, at level three, and I'm guessing that a lot of you are uh, completing or in the process of completing the level three awarding wines. At level three, the uh, recommended total study time is 84 hours. Um, of, of about, let's see, about 30 hours of which you get in the classroom. Um, and then the remaining time is dedicated to, to self-study. Um, so I think a good way of visualizing the, the level four qualification is as six mini qualifications rather than one big one. I think if you view the, the diploma as one big qualification, it can seem a little bit insurmountable and, and, and unmanageable and splitting it into six smaller units, we'll look at the format in a moment, is a really nice way to make it a little bit more achievable and digestible. 
So in terms of the, the breakdown of that 500 hours, anywhere between 20 and 25%, irrespective of the formats, classroom courses, online courses, online courses, about 25% of that 500 hours is educator led learning. So an educator taking you through online activities, discussions as part of an online course, or as an educator taking you through tasting samples, looking at PowerPoint presentations and invite, inviting an interactive discussions within the classroom. But what that does mean, again, irrespective as, as to the format, there is a big emphasis on students um, completing study outside of the classroom. Be under no illusion. You will not learn everything you need to learn as part of either the classroom or the online sessions. The qualification is structured so that you need to spend a significant proportion of the time, about 70 to 75% of the time, studying in your own time. And just to, again, to, to highlight, 12 hours of that 500 hours is purely you sat down um, undertaking closed book assessments. Um, so it still is a qualification that requires you to invest a lot of time outside of the classroom hours, the online activities that we're providing as a, as a, as a diploma provider. And how long does that take? Well, depending on the format, depending on um, your availability in terms of how much time you can dedicate, it generally takes anywhere between 18 and 36 months to complete. Um, for those more intensive formats, then it can be a little bit shorter. For those formats that perhaps tackle one session per week, it's obviously going to take a little bit longer. Um, and you should choose a format based on um, your circumstances, perhaps your financial circumstances, but your um, employment status, how much time you can dedicate to study outside of the classroom. And we'll take a look at those specific formats in a moment. OK, um, so we've had a look at the, the qualification um, on, a, on a larger scale. So this. This is a nice slide that, that breaks down the qualification into those six smaller units. Um, so essentially, we've got D1 through to D6. And this slide is structured so that D1, wine production, and D2, wine business, they're at the top. And the reason they're at the top is that they can be considered what we might refer to as foundation units. Um, and that's because you need to have a really good understanding of wine production, how wine is made, how grapes are grown, um, the growing environment. You need to have a really good understanding of wine business, including marketing, routes to market, points of sale. Um, and you'll have to apply your knowledge of D1 wine production, D2 wine business to the remaining units, D3, D4, D5, and D6, what we refer to as the product knowledge units. In fact, you will be reassessed on your understanding of wine production and wine business as part of those product knowledge units. So that's why we structure the courses um, so that you will um, complete the classroom sessions or the online sessions for D1, D2, and sit the associated exams for those units first. Because we need to make sure that you've got an understanding of those concepts because they're crucial for you to successfully attempt the remaining units. Okay, um, then we've got D3, wine to the world, D4, sparkling wines, D5, 45 wines, and then the D6, research assignments. And Irrespective as to the, the, the course format that you choose, I try and structure the courses so that you study a unit and then there's typically a break and then you're assessed, assessed on the content of that unit. And then you'll begin the next unit. You'll study the content and then there'll be a short break and then you'll be assessed on that unit. So we try and organize our courses sequentially to work through each of these units, not necessarily in this order, 
we don't go D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 typically. D1 and D2 first, as I've mentioned, and then we'll tackle the product knowledge units in, um, in uh, a, a different order. But the, the good news is that you study a unit, you're assessed, you study a unit, and you're assessed on that particular unit. So you don't have to worry about studying multiple topics, multiple units at the same time. We can work through them sequentially. And how we arrange our courses typically, so with a semester-based course, we typically uh, do D1, D2, D4, and D5 for the first semester, and D3 and D6 for the second semester. And if you're doing a continuous course, then we usually work through all of the units, D1, D2, D4, D5, D3, D6. But I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail a bit later. So they're the units and you need to demonstrate to the examiners that you know a little bit more than you don't, which means that you need to secure 55% in each of those units. You secure 55% in each of those units, you're awarded the diploma qualification. Fairly simple. Okay, so that's that's what's expected of you as a student. That's what you need to do in terms of the amount of time that you need to dedicate, how the, uh, the units are arranged. I suppose the next question is how are we going to support you through that process? Um, and I suppose this is, this is the, the slide which distinguishes us from other diploma providers. So at the WSET school, I run a team of four people. So myself included. So myself and three people that work with me to, to, um, to, to deliver the diploma qualification from the WSET School London. And that, okay, that's quite a small team, but that means that you've always got someone that you can get in touch with. So if you've got any questions relating to your schedule, you've got any questions about examinations, um, academic questions, then there's a team of people ready to answer those questions. Um, that includes myself, so I'm in charge of the team. We have um, an engagement and enrichment manager, so that's uh, uh, Lauren who looks after additional resources that we're able to offer at WSET school students. And then we've got diploma administrators uh, and other members of the team looking to, to continuously improve the way that we offer the diploma qualification. Um, an exceptional teaching faculty. So many of you, when you did your level three course or may still be doing your level three course, depending on where you did your qualification, your level three qualification, you may have seen the same person every week for 15 weeks. That will not be the case at the WACT school in London. So we have a diploma teaching faculty of about 16 educators and the reason for that is that we're reliant on different educators with different backgrounds with different subject specialties to deliver different parts of the diploma qualification so for instance when it comes to d1 wine production you might see me for d2 wine business you might see mags or you might see michelle and then when it comes to sparkling wine, you might see Lauren or you might see Shane. So you see different educators for different parts of the course. And we're reliant on those educators um, in being the, the best person that can possibly be stood at the front of your class or going through the online activities with you. They're a subject specialist, specialist. They know the digital materials. They know the content inside out. So we have um, a, a range of different additional online resources. You get a, a set of core materials, core digital materials that are, that are provided by the awarding body. So they create uh, and update the digital materials, but the, the School in London also offer some additional content as well. Um, that includes uh, additional quizzes, um, discussions, um, online activities, uh, but also uh, mock examinations, additional past papers, the opportunity to participate in 
um, live online tastings, to participate in classroom-based tastings at the school. We're trying to, 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 to broaden the, the, the offering that we're able to, to, to offer our students. So they've got lots of additional activities, many of which are free, um, to, to get them in the, the best po possible place so that they're well prepared for each of the assessments associated with each of the units. And that's something that's, that's relatively unique to the school, the WSET School of London, is our ability to offer those additional resources. In terms of the classroom setup and class size, so for our classroom-based courses, um, typically you might expect anywhere between 10 and 18 students, uh, classmates, um, and typically you will see those students throughout the entirety of your course those same students. Um, we try and limit the numbers so that we provide a more personal experience, essentially. We don't want the classrooms, the classroom size to become too large and unmanageable. The perfect number in terms of, uh, from, from my opinion, is about 14 students. And that way we can make sure that we've got a more personal experience, but we can provide, or, or you can provide sufficient uh, interaction and discussion to make the sessions a little bit more dynamic and interesting. The next comment here sounds fairly obvious, kind of wines that teach, um, the statement of the century, I mean, it's fairly obvious. So what I mean there is that certainly for our classroom-based courses, what we don't want to do is we don't want to pick a wine that shows just a variety or just the style of wine. The focus of the classroom-based courses is on tasting. So we try and show uh, samples that uh, demonstrate lots of different, different attributes um, so that we can teach the theory content through the samples that we've selected. So we might show, yes, a certain grape variety, um, a certain style of wine, but also a certain producer type, a certain production method, a certain classification. So we can teach lots of different aspects, lots of different theory content, through the samples that we provide uh, in the classroom, not just tasting a wine for tasting sake. And then finally, discounts and offers. So we, we let you know about opportunities to practice tasting, um, attend masterclasses, but also let you know about the additional online activities, the additional activities that the, the school are able to offer. So lots of different opportunities for you to Again, make sure that you're well prepared for each of the assessments, but also network with other students and, and enjoy the process um, of learning about wine. So this is a, a selection of our educators mentioned earlier. So we have, a, as I say, a faculty of about 16 educators. Um, I would probably say that about half of our educators are MWs. Um, about half of our educators, probably a little bit less, are full-time members of staff, so working within the school or in the wider WSET. But most importantly, whoever stood at the front is a subject specialist. They know what they're talking, talking about. They've been chosen to deliver that session because they have a particular interest in that particular topic or their, um, I suppose, their, their day job relates more specifically to that particular area. Okay, right, so finally, so the bit that usually takes up a little bit more time is um, going through the, the options, the course formats that the, the, the WSET School London offers. And it, compared to um, many other diploma centres around the world, we offer a much greater variety of different course types. Um, but what we can say is that irrespective as to which format you pick, the delivered content is, is the same. So in terms of the amount of educator-led learning, in terms of what you have to do, um, the qualification, it's exactly the same whether you pick an online course or a classroom-based course. It's exactly the same as to whether you pick a continuous delivery or a semesterized course. It's exactly the same. So what I wanted to do is just go through these different options. 
Um, starting perhaps with the, um, the continuous delivery. So the continuous delivery uh, course is one which includes all the units. So you pay up front for all the teaching and all the examinations associated with D1 all the way through to D6. So the entirety of the diploma content. And that's currently priced at four and a half thousand pounds. Okay, so within that continuous delivery option, there are a few different formats that we offer. But all of these formats, as I mentioned, all include D1 through to D6. Okay, so let's start with Saturdays and Mondays. That's not Saturdays and Mondays, that's a Saturday course and a Monday course. They're two separate courses, but they have a similar format. So the, the Saturday or the Monday format, 33 days, once a week. Uh, and that's classroom time from 10 o'clock in the morning till half past two in the afternoon. It's typically two two hour sessions, one 10 till 12, and then one 12.30 to 2.30. Um, about 22 months from start, to finish so it's a relatively um, short format but it's a very popular format with those students that um, can't attend during the week um, that that don't really want the uh, the length of course that might be offered via an evening format um, but it, it tends to be a little bit more intensive than the evening format because you're doing two sessions a day rather than one session per week um, but perhaps not quite as intensive as a, as a block course. Okay, evenings. So that's 62 evenings uh, once per week. So from 6.30 till 8.30 in the evening. And it'll be on the same day. So every Thursday uh, or every Monday, every Wednesday um, for the duration of the course. As you might expect, because you're only tackling one session per week, the pace is a little bit slower. Um, and as a result, it takes longer for the students to complete. So anywhere between kind of 26 and 30 months. Um, the evening format is good if you are, aren't able to attend during the week, uh, daytime during the week. Um, you don't want to give up Saturdays, you can't give up Mondays, you want to do something that fits around your job, or perhaps you want to take the course at a slower pace, then the evening format is a good option. And then finally, the final option in terms of continuous delivery is an intensive block. So this is whereby you attend 24 days um, split into four blocks. So it starts with a four day block, and then there's a break, and then there's a two day block, and then there's a break, and then there's a five day block, and there's a break, and then there's a 13 day block. And the idea is, is that we have intensive blocks of study. So those blocks run from nine o'clock in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. Again, typically covering three sessions per day. Because of the, um, the continuous block format, it typically takes students a shorter amount of time to complete the qualification. However, um, it does involve much more of a commitment of time from prospective students in terms of preparing for each of those blocks, but also taking time off to attend the classroom sessions. So this is an option for those students that, that want to get it done more quickly and have the opportunity to dedicate time both in the classroom, attending those blocks and outside the classroom preparing for the study. And because the blocks are closer together, there's a greater requirement for students to make sure that they're well prepared. There's a much greater pressure on their time to prepare for each of the assessments as well. OK, so all of those formats, Saturdays, Mondays, evenings, the intensive block are covered under our kind of continuous delivery options. So the alternative is a semester delivery. So semester delivery essentially splits the course into two. Um, so the first semester 
is typically 11 days for classroom courses or 17 weeks for online courses. Um, and that is half the fee, 2,250 pounds. And that will cover D1, wine production, D2, wine business, um, D4, sparkling wine, and D5, fortified wine. Once you've completed the first semester, so you've uh, attempted the D1 and D2 exams, you've covered the classroom or online content, D4 and D5, you can then register for a second semester course. Same fee, £2,250. Uh, and that is split into, uh, well, that's 13 days of delivery for classroom courses and 27, 27 weeks of delivery for online courses. So the semesterized option might be preferable for those that just want to break it up a little bit or perhaps envisage a, a break halfway through the study or perhaps those students that don't want to initially commit to, to paying the full fee. Within those semester delivery options, we've got uh, a few different choices. Okay, so day release. So that's where you attend one day per week. 11 days for a first semester course, 13 days for a second semester course. That's nine in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. And if we join both of those semesters together, it will probably take you around 22 months, two years from start to finish via that uh, format. Block is very similar, but in this case, we, we group units together. We group um, blocks of consecutive days of study. So it's still 11 days for the first semester and 13 days for the second semester, but it's four, two, and five for the first semester blocks, and then four, four, and five for the second semester. 9.30 to 4.30. It would probably take a similar amount of time to complete the study. So about 22 months to two years. Um, but again, I think the, 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 the consecutive option, the block option is perhaps more preferable to those students that want to commit an, a solid block of time to study the content. Um, it's, it tends to be attractive for those students that are joining us. Um, from overseas, our international students, because they can come and attend all the sessions for one particular unit within a shorter space of time. And then finally, we've got the online option. So perhaps just to give you a few more additional details about the online option. Um, the online option is delivered as a series of quizzes, assignments and discussions. A lot of students uh, incorrectly think that the online course will be delivered as a series of webinars. It's not. So um, an educator is assigned to each of the units and then you work through the, the digital materials as a series of um, quizzes or assignments, group discussions with other students on that particular course. And you're required to make online submissions each week so you can work ahead or catch up and as long as you meet that submission deadline, then you'll get feedback on your submission from the online educator. So 17 weeks for the first semester, 27 weeks for the second semester. That includes two tutorial days. So one tutorial day for the first semester and one tutorial day for the second semester. And the tutorial day is an opportunity for you to attend a classroom session at the WSET School in London, um, which focuses purely on tasting technique. So whereas the classroom courses, the focus is on tasting, as you might expect, the online courses, the focus isn't on tasting, it's a little bit more on theoretical. Um, a theoretical focus. So the tasting tutorials or tutorial days are a really good opportunity for students to come and perfect their tasting skills and make sure that they're well calibrated ahead of those assessments where tasting is part of um, uh, the assessment process. Okay, the good news about the semester delivery option is that you can mix and match. So if you wanted to do the first semester as an online course, 
and then the second semester as a day release or a block course, then you can. Or if you wanted to do it the other way around and do the first semester day release or block and the second semester online because your circumstances have changed, then you can. So there is some flexibility with the semester rise approach. Split it into half, half the cost initially, um, but then you can change the format should you need to as you move through the qualification. Um, one thing that I neglected to mention, the block course is also available in three other regional centres provided by the WSET school. So our um, samples, our educators travel to these regional centres and deliver the course locally where there's sufficient demand. Um, so currently the block course is offered mainly in London, but we also have a centre we want one course per year, one first semester, one second semester, Manchester, Dublin and Edinburgh. And again, the course content is the same. Okay, right, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the format. I'm sure you have lots of questions about the format. That's where the questions usually arise. So, I mean, that's that's it. Hopefully that's, that's a bit of a, a bit of insight in terms of, um, What's, what the qualification is about, how it can benefit you, the format of the qualification, but also um, what's expected of you as a student and how we're going to support you through that process. Um, I will now have a quick look through the, the Q&A section and a quick look through the chat section to see if there are any questions that I can answer. We've got about kind of five, 10 minutes to do so. But if you are interested in, in booking a course, then you can do so via um, this website address, wsetschool.com forward slash L4 diploma, and that'll take you through the, to the booking page, but also take you through to an area that's got lots more information about the diploma course in terms of the qualification structure, the specification, there's lots of sample questions there. So you can make sure that you're, you're making the right decision in terms of is the diploma well suited to you as a student? and decide on which format might be best suited to you and your circumstances. Um, right, okay, so let's have a quick look through these questions, let's see. Okay, right, so if you do the online course, is it possible to take the first exam in Edinburgh and the others in London? Possibly. I mean, I can't give you a, a solid answer to that, Dominic, but if you ask the question, we will try and be as flexible as we as we possibly can. Um, so if if you start the course in Edinburgh and then for some reason that you, you can't continue in Edinburgh or you'd like to do the examinations elsewhere, then we'll look to see if we can accommodate you on another course. So we would usually say to students in this situation, get in touch before you book the course and we will, we'll see what we can put in place for you. Okay, so let's have a look. I've read the information about diplomacy. Okay, right, so excuse the pronunciation, but I think your name is Soledad Penades. So, um, okay, we have a lot of course starts in in September, but also course starts in January and course starts in kind of March, April, springtime. So we have lots of different formats starting at different points throughout the year. And to give you an idea, we probably have anywhere between 24 and 30 courses starting each year um, across those different formats. So what that essentially means is that um, there are lots of opportunities to start at different points. There's not one intake per year. Um, so that should give you a little bit of flexibility in terms of when you want to start. What, what we can't really do and what's very difficult for us to accommodate is, is when students want to do part of the course with one group and then another part of the course with another group. Our courses tend to be quite popular and we find managing a large number of students, kind of 400 students, very difficult if they're joining lots of different courses. Um, so I think that that should answer your question. But yeah, I mean, if you've got any specific questions about which course might be best suited to you, particular format, 
then feel free to get in touch. Okay, so this uh, Leonard, is it possible to take a reset of one session if failing possible to do the second semester in a different city or country than the first semester? Okay, um, so if you, the fee that you pay includes all the examinations for that particular course, your first sit for all of those examinations. So if you, um, fail an exam then you have to pay to resit and it's up to you when you reschedule that resit. Um, if you want to do that with another provider you're more than welcome to but you would have to rearrange that yourself. If you wanted to attend some classroom sessions with us relating to the um, the unit that you uh, that you, you failed in then again you can contact us to see we, whether we can accommodate you on another course. Um, in terms of splitting between the first semester and the second sem semester, yes, absolutely. If you wanted to do the first semester with us and then contact another provider to do D3 and D6 as part of a second semester course, again, you're most welcome. We can transfer your registration to another institute if, if you wanted to. And vice versa, if you started elsewhere and then wanted to come to us to finish, again, we can, we can make that happen. Um, okay, well, what else we got? So an example of an opportunity after WSCT level four. Okay, right, I think it's, it's really important to say that the diploma will not guarantee you a job by any respect. The diploma course is a product knowledge focused course. So it tells you about the world of wine, wine production, wine business, and certain styles of wine. I think to, to give yourself the best possible opportunity of securing employment related to the industry on completion of the qualification, you need to have some other skills. So other skills in terms of are you, are you in marketing or are you in retail or sales or buying um, or, or digital formats, but you need some of the skills beside the qualification, beside the, the, the diploma qualification. So the diploma qualification is testament to your product knowledge skills, but you would need some supporting qualification to go alongside the diploma. Hopefully that's answered your question. Okay, what is the pass rate in class format versus online format? Actually, very similar. Um, so the, the, the difference is typically on tasting. As you might expect, classroom students tend to perform a little bit better um, as part of the the, the, the the tasting element of the examinations. Theoretic, the theoretical attempts, so those students attempting the theory part of the assessment tend to be the same for online and classroom based. But where the focus is on tasting for classroom based courses, it's, it's inevitable that our classroom based students tend to do a little bit better with that particular element of the assessment. That's why if you do choose to do the online format, you need to make sure that you've got access to samples, um, that you've got the opportunity to, to, um, to do tasting with peers, that you participate in the virtual tasting exercises as part of the activities on the online classroom, um, but you attend those tutorials as well. They're key to, to, to successfully passing the tasting elements. Um, okay, so from Carol, what have we got next? So the, the six sections. So most other providers outside the WACT school offer the course via a unit by unit basis. So they may group together D1 and D2, and then you can pay for and do the units in whatever order you want. That's not how we offer it at the school. So at the school, we offer it as a... Um, um, a package. So you can either pay for the whole thing, D1 through to D6, or as a semester, uh, semesterized course, splitting it up into first semester and second semester. But we typically, irrespective of the format, we typically tackle it D1, D2, because you have to do those two first in that order. And then we do D4, sparkling, D5, fortified, D3, light wines, and then finish with the D6 research assignment. 
And the reasoning behind doing D4 and D5 before D3 is that they're smaller units. They comprise, combine 10% of the qualification. So it allows students to get their teeth into specific styles of wine, but also the tasting part of the assessment before they move on to the larger and much more difficult D3 light wines unit. Um, could a student mix and match where to study? Yeah, absolutely. I think I've answered that question, Carol. So if you wanted to start with us and then finish elsewhere, then you're welcome to do that or the other way around. Okay, so from Catherine, I'm not in the industry and doing it for my own interest. Um, this course is done online. How do you access the wines and understand the tasting of them outside the classroom? Okay. Um, so it's probably worth saying that about, I would say, 20%, uh, 25% of our students are not in the industry and their chances of uh, successfully passing the qualification um, are just as good as those that are in the industry. Uh, I think if you aren't in the industry, then you're right. You have to be a little bit more proactive in terms of seeking out tasting opportunities. Um, if you're choosing to do an online course, then they include virtual tasting exercises whereby you have to go out and taste samples, write tasting notes on those samples and then sit, submit your notes for feedback. Um, so, so it's not uh, it's not the same as, as, as tasting in person with an educator as part of the classroom sessions, but you do get feedback in terms of the structure of your tasting notes, whether they're broadly accurate. Uh, in terms of the anticipated style of wine, how you structured your conclusions. Okay, I am fast running out of time. I've probably got time for a couple more questions. Um, so from Nicola, let's see, I'm thinking of starting the block release semester, one in January, when would semester two be start starting? Um, so you don't have to pass all your units, you just need to make sure that you have attempted D1 and D2, and that you have covered the classroom content for D4 and D5. I would encourage you to pick a second semester start date after you have sat the exams for D4 and D5. For yourself, the, the earliest opportunity to do that would probably be September 2023. Um, and that way you can concentrate on each of the units rather than starting to cover D3 when your D4 and D5 exams are still outstanding. Okay, Emma, Emma O'Connell. Yes, we are doing a course in Dublin. Let's see, we have a first semester starting in March. I think the dates are for the first semester course are now live, so they're on the, the school website. Uh, and then there'll be a second semester course starting, I think in May. But yes, we are planning on returning to Dublin in the, in the, in the, the current academic year. So you should be able to, to book those um, fairly soon. Um, let's see, have a little, what else have we got? Um, from Irina, so the online course, how is it to calibrate tasting skills? Um, yeah, I think the, 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 the instruction that you will get from your educators will be kind of the, the structure of your notes, but because they're not tasting those wines exactly the same wines as you, you'll be given some guidance in terms of what wines to buy, but it is more difficult to calibrate on the online course. And that's why attending the tutorial days included as part of your course is really important. Um, so when you book a course, making sure that you can attend on that tutorial day where you will go through extensively the calibration process, uh, how marks are allocated, and give you the opportunity to taste with, with one of our classroom educators. And it's not surprising, but those students that attend the classroom tutorials tend to be those students that, that, that are more likely to pass and more likely to get uh, secure higher marks than those students that don't. So those tutorials are hugely important. 